actually uh, when I, I I never ever thought you know I would have to write his biography because Kasturi ji mm -hmm. wrote first four volumes yeah. and next quarter century nobody attempted writing his biography and in 2003 you know I was prompted and Baba blessed me to write his uh, biography and uh, he guided me also to gather material. Mm -hmm. For more than 50 years, a never-ending reflection of selfless love. Mudnahali's Narasimha Murti, no salary has ever played a role in his life. All needs were supplied by Holy Man Sri Satya Sai Baba without request. And after Baba left his body, Murti describes how he receives to this day Sai Baba's emphatic, detailed, and specific direction. Yeah. Then when after the Mahasamadhi, when Baba came to you... Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. July 10th. July 10th. He said, no one words, you know, I, I will use uh, Satya Sai Anandam. But here I want to give a clarification. It does not mean that he is not there elsewhere. <laughs> See... Prashanti, for example. Yeah, if I present, yeah, anywhere. Yeah. He is everywhere and he is in every home where he is loved. University warden, teacher, author, devotee, leader. Narasimha Murti is a man who carries out the greatest and smallest requests of Sai Baba's will. Murti is the author of the final volumes of Satyam Shivam Sundaram, the life story of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba, from 1986 onward. And Murti has also recorded his own galvanizing autobiography, Sri Satya Sai Divya Kripaspraya, under the umbrella of divine grace of Sri Satya Sai. Now here I want to tell you something which Swami has told me. It is true that I declared to the world that I would be in this Satya Sai Baba form for 96 years. I left when I was 85, but I will be in this subtle body till I am 96. So and there's continue, a time frame on And continue to do what I did. Mm. And the only proof is things are happening. No, they are. Things are happening. This account describes how Narasimha Murti's life has been fashioned for service to others. Even after 70 years of age, Baba has this most obedient devotee performing tasks impossible for the rest of us. The love and service described here depicts a recipe for sainthood. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This interview was recorded in January 2013 on the sprawling campus in Mudnahali, India of the Sri Satya Sai University and Lower Schools. Narasimha Murti. Yes, please. Anna, big brother. Uh, Anna, big brother. That's how <laughs> younger people call me. <laughs> yes. It is such a pleasure to be able to talk with you after so many years. I remember seeing you years ago at Vrindavan. Yes. And I was just there this morning listening to the world's most beautiful bhajans on Sunday morning. I want to ask you before I get into anything else, how you came to Swami when you knew you were on a deep spiritual path? Actually, uh, first time I met Bhagwan when I was only 19 years old, way back in 1964. You met him then? Yeah, 1964 at Puttaparthi. And uh, just before that, a deep spiritual quest had started in me because I was uh, hunted by two questions which generally do not occur to young people. One was uh, the question of death. If uh, every man is going to die, what is the use of this life? See, that question had become an obsession with me. That's that, 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 that was much before I uh, came to Bhagavan Baba, maybe a year before. <coughs> And where did that come from? I've never heard anybody say they had such a know. profound I, interest I, in the purpose of life. Yeah, I do know. The second is, uh, how, why, who placed me in this vast universe? You know, nights, you know, the starry skies would scare me. Uh, and these were questions which I couldn't ask anybody. I tried to ask some people who, about whom I thought uh, they can guide me, but they thought, you know, I had gone of my mind. So I just kept quiet. At the same time, I had lost faith in God. See, as a child, my parents were uh, thieves. They were very religious people, brought me up on a spiritual diet. As a young boy, I had great devotion. Uh, why I say I had great devotion to God when I was a young child and boy was, whenever I heard the stories of great saints, you know, I would cry. That would happen very spontaneously. 
remembering that I would say that I had a great devotion to God. Mm -hmm. But somewhere when I was studying in the college, it so happened that was the fashion those days. The Marxist ideas were spreading very fast. That was in the early 60s mm -hmm. in India, especially college students, the Marxist ideas were spreading. And uh, with that, I thought I became an atheist, but most importantly, I lost faith in God. I used to get very, I mean, very, uh, you know, searching doubts whether God is really there or not. See, that was there. So that was a kind of question. That was the time when these two uh, problems started haunting me and it became an obsession. So I lost interest in life. At such a young age. Yeah, 18 years when old. When most people have everything to yeah, live everything, Yeah, even I had everything. But certainly, you know, these questions became so serious for me. I wanted to find answers. Is there anything beyond death? And uh, why am I placed in this universe? So these two questions. So what happened? Uh, and then, you know, I had one friend. In fact, actually this morning he had come here. After a long time we met. He was a devotee of Ramakrishna Paramahansa and Vivekananda. So we used to have very long discussions on whether God exists or not. Of course, the arguments were never conclusive because I couldn't prove to him that God uh, doesn't exist and he couldn't prove to me that God exists. So that's how things were happening. Then suddenly one night, you know, it became so unbearable for me and uh, uh, somebody had left a magazine with a Jesus Christ on the cover page mm -hmm. on my table. It was quite, uh, you know, late in the night. Maybe it could be 2 a.m. Okay. in the morning. I just got up. I was feeling very perturbed. I looked at that photograph and broke down. Really? And prayed to God. Prayed to God. So that touched you. That yeah, provoked yeah, you. Yeah, that's how it happened. I prayed to God. God, if you really exist, I am also your son like Jesus. Why do you forsake me? Uh, that is the kind of, from depth, I got that, uh, you know, prayer. And uh, I was crying for a long time and slept off. Morning, I woke up with firm faith in God. God exists. It that, just, it that, came that, to you. That, that came to that Even though you were asleep at the time, it came yeah, to Yeah, it came. That faith came. When I got up, I was so very happy. And felt, uh, when did I feel that I didn't believe in God? That was the question which was occurring to me. Complete faith. But my concept of God at that point of time was uh, cosmic power, which has created this universe and running this universe. I couldn't somehow believe that, you know, God could be in the human form or any particular form. It was just an invisible energy as far as you Exactly. Yeah. Energy. Cosmic energy. Mm -hmm. Energy, conscious energy. Not, uh, you know, unconscious energy. It is conscious energy uh, who responds to anything that happens in the universe. That kind of uh, faith I had when I woke up, but I was very happy. At that time, this friend, you know, gave me some books on uh, Ramakrishna, Paramsa and Vivekananda. Mm -hmm. So that really led me to the path. Then I started praying to God. If, uh, especially I prayed to Ramakrishna Paramsa once actually. You were there 100 years before to guide young people like us. Today, who is there? If there is anybody of your kind on earth today, please lead me to him. So that's what I prayed. Within three, three months, I got, uh, I was led to Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. And how were you led to him? Yeah. What was it that led yeah, you to him? I tell you. See, the, my mentor, Madhyal Narayan Bhatt, whom all of us called Anna. Mm -hmm. See, my younger people, younger brothers call me Anna. But all of us called him Anna. And uh, he came into my life because I was studying in Bangalore, engineering college at that time. And uh, he was, uh, you know, gathering young people who are interested in uh, nation, society, service and talking to them. And first time uh, he told me about uh, Bhagavan Sri Sat Sai Baba. And he said, if you are interested, I will take you to him. And I also pray that he will grant you an interview. That's what he said. Those days, you know, 64, it was quite easy, you know. A few hundred people would be around in uh, Prashant Lim at any point of time. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time you really heard of his name. Probably the first time you ever saw a photograph of him? Uh, no. Actually, uh, I, by chance I had encountered a book uh, on Baba written by someone I don't remember at that point of time. Earlier, I had known that. 
but you know at that time lot of mispropaganda was happening uh, in the newspapers here southern india about baba mm -hmm. so i thought you know he was a fraud that's what i thought but when uh, my mentor told me i will take you to him uh, i said yes let's go you know i felt the same way i was in south america working yeah. for the peace corps from america yeah. and in 1968 saw yeah. his picture for the first time in a news magazine mm. and i felt the same way yeah. <laughs> boy did i do an about face yeah, exactly. it took time for exactly me. exactly exactly the same way that's it so then when your prayers were answered yeah my you found a guide you yeah. found a teacher yeah were you quick to embrace him or did it come the slow way as it does for no. some of us no it was uh, almost immediate uh, as soon as i saw baba in puttaparathi for the first time there was some stirring inside me and uh, when he called me for interview uh, i broke down uh, i couldn't really you know i was not uh, in my real senses uh, that way and for about 15 minutes i broke down baba was very kind and patient to wait for me and then uh, he spoke the first words to me what he said is you should have come long time back you have come late uh, <laughs> but you are worrying about your future don't worry about your future your future is safe in swami's hands that's what he said first words so that gave me instant uh, faith but not that my faith, faith settled down immediately after that i had to go through really Uh, almost one year of very excruciating uh, trauma in my mind whether i'm believing the wrong person whether i'm being misled this kind of question because so you still had one more period where doubt yeah, crept in yeah after one month after no, one month after no the point what attracted me to swami at that point of time was uh, people you know who knew baba at that time or who didn't know about baba at that time were telling me si sai baba is rich man's god mm -hmm. he will talk only to rich people people in position authority And of course you were a rich man with lots of authority. No, I was not. Yeah, yeah, I was not <laughs> at that time. I was a pauper. I didn't have education. I didn't have position. But <coughs> Baba called me and spoke to me with so much love as if you know he was a, a long lost uh, friend or what. See that attracted me in spite of uh, doubt in my mind. I was a doubting Thomas according to Swami himself. Once the old called me once that he too. called me also the same thing. <laughs> We have a lot in common. Yeah, lot of doubting Thomas is around. <laughs> yes. And uh, you know that love affection attracted me. That's why every month I started going and every month he was speaking to me calling me for an interview. I was just boy of 19 uh, years at that time. Why did he shower so much attention so much fear? Because he thought I think I would be useful as a warden for a lifetime. <laughs> and you for, became a warden for, for, for his students, for his students. And he what he thought was correct because Pro probably, you know, probably he thought more importantly now I know the whole thing was a master plan. Now I very well know. Whole thing was a master plan in retrospect. And uh, the last visit of Bhagwan Baba to this place on uh, 14th of February 2009 on the Valentine's Day, uh, he materialized this uh, ring and put it on my finger. Well, I can't believe he didn't materialize that 40 years ago for you. It's a beautiful <laughs> ring. I will come to that. Okay. Uh and uh, then he told me at that point of time, Mr. Nar I, he called me on the stage and materialized. It is not that. See, I had enough We called you on the stage. Stage. No, I was on the stage along with Baba. Mm -hmm. I thought I had to translate his, you know, Telugu yes, uh, discourse into English because there were a lot of people who didn't know Telugu. I was just sitting behind him. Uh, we had a lot of time before that inside the room i was all alone with him for a long time but he didn't do that but when he started speaking of course he didn't give me any attention therefore i sat down because i thought he didn't want any translation <laughs> and suddenly he called me narsimha murthy english <laughs> yeah narsimha murthy and uh, you know he materialized this ring and put it on my finger and then said in public narsimha murthy you have to come to muddinalli you have some work to do here Yes, you had to come here. Yeah, yeah. I will tell you why. This because was no, I was no, and that's what that's thing. what I think. Now I think it is yes. confusing because, uh, you know, Baba came here in 1983, seventh of August, and uh, took me from here to Puttaparthi to make me warden in the university at that point of time. Till 83, since the inception of this particular campus, which was started, just a school yeah, at 73. that time. Yeah, 73. So it was a school at that time. 1973 we started this school and offered this school to bab bhagwan in 1978 which he took over 
and he was coming here quite often after that. In 1983, when he came here on a visit on 7th of August 1983, he asked me, are you ready to come with me? I said, yes. So then Swami said, not for a ride. Can you come and stay with me there and work, serve me? That's I said, Swami, that's what I want. And how much uh, time would you require to pack up? I said, 30 minutes. <laughs> he, you know, he was surprised. <laughs> I mean, it looked, he looked surprised. So that day, Baba took me to Puttaparthi, made me warden there. And then I was warden of the university hostel for uh, uh, 17 plus 12. This 29 is years. Vrindavan or uh, first, first in Puttaparthi, okay. six years. Then Swami wanted me to go to Brindavan. I was in Brindavan for 22 to 23 years. So he really put you to yeah, work for yes. a long time. Yeah, a very long time. I mean, I mean, lifetime warden is difficult to find, especially <laughs> in Satasa <laughs> University. No more a warden. No, no. You're no. a warden emeritus. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a warden emeritus. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I was in Brindavan when Baba was about to visit this place for uh, doing groundbreaking ceremony for the university here, which he had announced on the previous birthday. Three or actually. four years ago. Yeah, yeah. That was 2008 birthday. Okay. But once, you know, it, it, nobody expected, he announced that I want to have a university campus in Muddenhalli. So it's totally off the radar. Nobody yeah, knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nobody. I also didn't know. People were looking at me thinking that maybe Baba had discussed it with me. I was having a question. So that's how it was. I was in Brindavan, but Swami sent word to me through three or four people. I had to present here for that occasion. Mm -hmm. So I came here and uh, this is what Baba did. You have work to do in Muddenhalli. But after that, I asked Baba, when I have to go there, I will tell you. But you know, just maybe a month before he left the body in uh, you know 2011, April 24th, he gave me a hint. You have to go to Muddenhalli. So then Baba got admitted to the hospital. Therefore, I was in Prashantilim all those days. And after that, because it was Swami's command, I moved here on uh, 18th of May to Muddenhalli. Okay, this was before yeah. he left a his body. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then, you know, I was wondering what work I had to do here and waiting for it. I thought it was university work, but uh, Swami very clearly indicated uh, that I had to establish uh, more schools, Satisai schools in this uh, state of Karnataka. So he wasn't referring to this one. It was already established. He was referring to future schools. I think there's like 30 districts in this exactly, state, correct? Exactly, exactly. Karnataka. Exactly. And, and so he wanted you to start thinking about establishing yeah, schools exactly, everywhere. Exactly, exactly. Just in the state of Karnataka. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Just, no, that's what he has said. But right now he is uh, you know, guiding me to go to a place outside Karnataka, which I have not told anybody, even she is looking at me <laughs> with uh, surprise. So Baba, I'm I don't getting know, ahead well, of myself here because Baba obviously guides you and talks to you yeah. all the time. So yeah, the, no, we're no, making news here yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. No, not all the time. Uh, whenever he wants, even earlier it was like that. Whenever I want, I couldn't go to him and talk to him. <laughs> Whenever he wanted to talk to me, he would talk to me. Even earlier when he was in the physical body. And even now uh, it is so. Before we get on to that story, because I'd love to hear where he's guiding you to outside of Karnataka. Yeah. And we'll do that in a minute. But first, one of the famous um, guidances that you're known for with Baba was following his Mahasamadhi. When he talked about this place as his home, could you, could you, for the benefit of the Sai Baba devotees around the world yeah. who don't hear all the stories here because okay. they're not here, could you briefly review yeah. that story? See, that was on uh, 10th of July. 15th July was Guru Purnima, 2011. Uh, uh, and 10th of July, first time Bhagwan, you know, I, I saw him. You, and so and what I wrote was a dream. You, mean, you said you saw him. I saw him in, in a dream. You saw him in a dream. Okay. A dream, yes. And uh, that was the time he told me that on uh, the Guru Purnima day, uh, he will come to Satyasai Anandam, which was newly built for him. Okay. Before that, he used to stay in uh, Premdeep, which is another mandir, uh, at the foot of the hill, actually. And he said, uh, now I am going there. Uh, here at Madhahali? At Muddinali, we have in fact three mandirs. Okay. Uh, one is what we call as the old mandir, where he visited 18 times. 
He appeared. He came. Yeah, he times. came. He came physically. Came eighteen times, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he was using that old mandir, okay. which they will show you tomorrow. Okay. And then after that, we built a new mandir at the foot of the hill. Uh, that you know, there Swami visited uh, eleven times. Okay. And uh, last time when he came, he did the ground breaking ceremony for another mandir on hilltop, which is now named Sri Satya Sai Anandam. And I understand that he never visited that. He never visited visit. that because he came only for Bhumi Puja, mm -hmm. our ground breaking ceremony. And several times uh, Baba was asking me when it was being constructed, what is the st uh, stage at which it is and whether the clock tower is coming up well. Every time I said, Swami, it's going well, but why not you come? He said, I'll come, I'll come. But he never came physically. Was the clock tower his idea or your idea? It was clock tower was his idea. Okay. So yes. all along there was plans for yeah, a clock yeah, tower. Yeah, clock tower was his idea. In fact, the architects had uh, designed it a little shorter. Swami wanted it that high mm -hmm. uh, as it is uh, now. So let's not lose where we are in this story here. Yeah. Then when after the Mahasamadhi, when Baba came to you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. July 10th. July 10th. He said, now onwards, you know, I, I will use uh, Satya Sai Ananda. But here I want to give a clarification. It does not mean that he is not there elsewhere. <laughs> See, Prashanti, for example. Yeah, yeah for example, yeah, anywhere for that. He's See, in Cleveland, he, Ohio. He, he, he's everywhere. Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Yeah, yeah. he is everywhere and he is in every home where he is loved. So what did he mean by that? He said, the, see earlier he was in the, the Prem Deep Mandir, which he visited. Yes. He said, I will be in uh, Satya Sai Ananda. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. It doesn't mean that he stays only in Satya Sai Ananda in Mudinali and not elsewhere. I want to give that clarification, which people generally, you know, get confused about. Well, I understand and yeah. that's clarified, but he must have meant something by that. Definitely, because he gave all the details. Like, you know, the cot you have, which you have uh, put in this old mandir, Prem Dev, is uh, too high for me. Mm -hmm. Make it short and move all my personal belongings from this Prem Dev, old mandir, to Satya Sai And all this guidance came after yeah, 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 all, all this guidance came. And one thing, you know, uh, he told me was that on that day of Guru Purnima, we had to distribute clothes to all the thousand students here. New clothes, clothes. White, mm -hmm. white clothes, new clothes. I was just wondering, you know, where do I get, uh, I mean, so much money for this? Swami, are you going to make these clothes for me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then it happened, you know, next morning, of course, so much other guidance also he gave me there. Uh, then, you know, a lot of it is very personal. And then, uh, you know, next morning, 11 o'clock, one of our old students, uh, alumni, alumnus, comes mm -hmm. into my room and says, uh, I have brought a uh, thousand uh, <laughs> pairs of clothes for the students. Really? Yes. And I just asked him, how did you get this? He said, Swami prompted me. That's all he said. <laughs> After he prompted yeah. you to but, uh, Next time when he came, I asked him, how did Baba communicate to you that you have to get this thousand pairs? Then he said, the same way he communicates with you. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> and you're not going to tell us about yeah, that. that, that, that that's, what, <laughs> see, that's what it was. So that confirmed that there was some substance in that, uh, you well, know, guidance of Swami. Of course it would confirm and that. We and had, we had a very nice uh, function so, but, on 15th But of why July. does he say things like, this will be my home? Maybe, you know, see, there are a lot of people who are spiritual aspirants in this place, who are totally dedicated to Bhagavan's service. Like, you know, Catholic uh, priests. Mm -hmm. We do have about 40 people. Do. Yeah, yeah. People without family and encumbrances like myself. Mm -hmm. And there are youngsters like our Siva Subramanyam also. And maybe he loves them. And maybe he thought, you know, that would give us a great confidence and a sense of, uh, you know, uh, assurance it was. Probably. Because I do believe, uh, and also he asked us that uh, he should be served food. You know, like he was there in physical form. So do you serve him food? We, here? we, we. And in fact, he selected two students from university at that point of time. He this gave the names. After he died, after he left. The, all body. this happened on 10th of July. Okay. 10th and so 11th July. He gave you two names. Yeah, two names of students, students who should serve him. So we selected those two boys. And, uh, you know, they have been serving, of course, assisted by some of our uh, teachers. Uh, you know, who loves Swami. Let me ask you a silly question. Yeah. Does he eat the food? Uh, well, really, you know, sometimes <laughs> there are signs. There okay. are signs 
there are signs. See, because uh, those boys who serve food, one day came and uh, showed me some, you know, long hair, you know, uh, on the plate. Mm -hmm. uh, so he said, uh, how did this come here? <laughs> it could be Baba's. Mm -hmm. The point here is, I would like to tell you here, this clarification is very much required for devotees. Baba is not in the physical body now. Physical body is gone once for all. He is in the subtle body. Once and for all. Once and for all. This is my understanding as per what he has told me. But he is present to us in the subtle body. Yeah, subtle body. Mm -hmm. Subtle body. We can't see yeah, it. You can, it. Yeah, you can see him. Like this, I tell you how it is. Subtle body interacts with your subtle body in your dream. In your or, dream. Yeah, dream. Or he can interact with you in meditation. If you have achieved enough expertise to have that kind of focus. So if you're deeply enough into yeah, your deep, silence. Deeply, deeply in meditation. You know, you are in the subtle body. See, we are, we are, uh, we are really the subtle body and the causal body. Physical body is only our dress. See, this is what Baba was telling us. That is the truth also. Mm -hmm. And he is in the subtle body only. And uh, he appears in the meditation, deep meditations, visions. So there also he can guide you. Therefore, when we say that Baba eats food, it is not physical food. I see. He takes the subtle part of the food. See, all this is very difficult to understand for, for no, normal lot of people. The, the way you're explaining it. Thank yeah. you for explaining it this yeah, way. Yeah. See, it is like this. See, it is like this. No, I mean, uh, you know, suppose you keep a tumbler of water mm -hmm. in front of him. It is not that, you know, there will be, uh, you know, when he drinks water, uh, there will be some less quantity of water in the tumbler. He takes the subtle pot of water because all spiritual masters have told us any form, object, lifeless object or, a, or a, an animal or a bird or an insect or human beings, all of them have three forms. That's why Baba said, you are not one but three. You know that. Mm -hmm. One is what you think you are is the body. When you, others people what others are. think you are is the mind, subtle body. What you really are is that one. Is. So therefore, everything has three forms actually. Mm -hmm. Look at this chair. There is a subtle form for this. Mm -hmm. This is what every master has said. When, it, when, we say, when you say that he eats food, it eats the subtle form of the food because it is a subtle body. Mm -hmm. See, that is how it is. And we also have the, you know, the very you know, sacred uh, custom of offering food in our temples to gods. Sure you we, know, we offer Naivedyam, it is called. In every temple they offer. And it is not that you know, God eats that food physically, but the subtle form of that food is consumed by God. Because he is in the subtle form. So that's really uh, sort of a, a euphemism or uh, uh, a manner of speaking when he says this is his home. Obviously, every place in existence is yeah, exactly. his home. Yes. But he has a fondness for this place because of his yes. many visits here. Yeah, exactly. And because of the boys he's chosen to feed yeah, him. Exactly. And the three mandirs here. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and because of you, be I'm not saying that you're special, but I am saying there has to be a reason for his guidance to you that's so frequent. Yeah, even earlier, see, for I was uh, with Bhagwan for 47 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, first time when he guided me, I was only 19 years old, as I told you. Yeah. After that... 1963? 1964. 64. Four. And uh, I've done just what he has told me all these years. Totally loyal. Yes, totally. Because, see, he told me, you know, you have to go to this particular place, I went. And then he said, you have to move to another place, I moved. And uh, then he told me, most important thing in my life was uh, dedicating my life for uh, spiritual aspiration and service, which he blessed. He said, don't get married. So I followed it. Therefore, everything I followed, therefore, it is no surprise to me that he is guiding me even today. Because uh, I, to I was totally dependent on him for everything. And to be very frank with you, at this point of time, I never received any salary anywhere in my life. How did you live? I sustained on what he gave me physically. Okay. Just what he gave me. And you worked full time, seven days a week, no doubt. Yeah. Endlessly yeah. for the boys, yes. for the university, yes, yes. for the ashram. Yes. Yes. I, I always did what he wanted me to do. And he looked after all my needs, material needs, spiritual needs. So you don't have many attachments because I'm sure without getting any salary, he provided, he provided, he provide, provided everything to me and I needed. just depended on him for everything, but he never failed me. 
So never fail me. One particular incident, which is so touching, I would like to tell you at this point of sure. time. Uh, that was uh, almost in uh, 2010, I think. It was 2010, one year before Bhagwan passed away. And uh, it was my birthday. I was in uh, Brindavan. And uh, our, uh, my deputy warden, Dr. Ravi Kumar, who is presently warden in Brindavan, mm -hmm. was in Puttaparthi. Baba called him inside the interview. And I had not told anybody that was my birthday because nobody knows when is my birthday because I never disclosed it. Because living among students, if you announce your birthday, it's a very difficult thing on the birthday for you. So even now, nobody knows when exactly is my birthday. Bhagwan told him, today is uh, his birthday. And uh, you know, that time Baba was not able to write. But himself wrote on a cover, envelope, you know, which was having money in that. Uh -huh. He wrote to Dear Narasimha Murthy, from your Sai Ma. Sai Ma. Ma, Ma he calls himself. That. And I could see that handwriting. Today I, will, I have, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, I, I have preserved it as a great treasure in my life. Of course. Because it is not steady hand. And, you can and see. when you said because he could not write, this is when he didn't have motor skills to write with a yeah, steady physical, hand. Physical hand. Physically. But he wrote this anyway. Yeah. And he said and gave it to Ravi Kumar and told him give it to him. And had money on the inside? Yeah, a lot of money. <laughs> 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 Though I never drew any salary. So your all my life, gave you a real yeah, nice birthday Saima present. sustained me. And all my life I have lived like a prince. <laughs> a prince? Yeah, I never lacked anything. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes. because you're the model of non-attachment. Yeah. Non-attachment. I mean, you provided for her with chapatis uh -huh. yeah. and white clothes, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you have a roof over your yeah, head. Yes, and yes. beyond that, there's very little yes. that you need yeah. or want, apparently. Yeah, exactly. But whatever I needed at any point of time, he always uh, gave me without my asking. I mean, in fact, I never asked for anything. See, that is the other side. I have never asked him. He has told me any number of times, Narsimha Murthy, if you want something, you ask me, I will give. But all my life, I practiced this principle. I never asked him anything. Without being asked, he gave me always everything. But you're a man of tremendous power. I, I use that term. Faith. Faith, faith uh, authority, leadership skills. So I can't imagine how inestimable it must be for the students who have been here, for the graduates that you've nurtured throughout the years, for the other, for the Seva dolls, for the other administrative workers, to know your story, know that you've never asked for anything, and know that even in your position of influence, you've always been given everything you need. Yeah, always. And always. never needed more, never wanted Never more. needed more. Suppose I didn't get anything, I thought I don't need it. I thought and believed I don't need it. <laughs> he always gave me what I needed. Yeah, exactly, that's, uh, that's the thing. Is it, uh, we're going to jump around just a little bit because we have limited time and I have so many interesting areas I'd like to just briefly touch upon. You've made it clear to me that Baba comes to you and guides you often. Yeah. I'm not interested so much in how he comes to you. Yeah. but We can, can do you, it in uh, 101 ways, as you said. <laughs> yeah, but can you share with us a little more about what he, let's just say in the last month or so, the last week or so, yeah. how he guides you? So the point is, right now he has interested to me the job of expansion of his educational mission. Which you're working on. Yes. Uh, now, right now we have uh, five new school projects on hand. For Karnataka. In Karnataka. And two have already started working. We do have about 1000 students in our institutions right now. This particular trust, which was formed as per guidance from Baba, Sri Satya Sai Saraswati Education Trust, for which all the members are our alumni. Mm -hmm. uh, one year back it was founded. Now within one year, we have two schools running already and three new school projects, out of which two will start next June. That's that a is phenomenal two, pace. That's a phenomenal June. pace. Yeah, and it is a lot of work for me. A lot of work. <laughs> sure. A lot, lot of work. So I rarely stay in uh, Mudhyan Haldi. All the time, you know, I'm hopping from place to place and setting up the schools, construction. And uh, one thing, you know, which may be of uh, great uh, joy for the devotees is when he told me on 7, 27th of August, four months after he left the body, he told me that uh, uh, it is my sankalpa to start a school in a place called Gulbarga. 
And where is that? Gulbarga is 700 kilometers from here. It's not a in Karnataka. No, it is in northern Karnataka. Northern, northern Karnataka. Okay. Which I never <laughs> gone. Never gone. So he's giving you the precise location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, no, what place. he told me was this. I have chosen a land, 50 acres in extent. And it is enclosed by two roads. One north-south and one east-west. And it is sloping towards the east. This is what all he told me. Then he told me to go to Gulbarga on September 6th. 27th August, he told me. Is this a small village or a big town? Oh, no, it's a huge place. Oh, is it? Okay. It's I'm a huge sure. place. It's <laughs> a Gulbarga is not a town. It's a district. It's a district. District, very huge district. Okay. And uh, when I went, you know, some of my friends joined me because uh, they were also interested in this mad venture. You had to find this place. Yeah, I had to find the place. So we went round and round and we saw about 20 to 25 places. And finally, I thought this was the place because it matched the specification well, given by Baba. Many places have an east-west road and a north-south yeah. road or something. Yeah, it is. On it a is. slope. But <laughs> at that time, whenever I got a doubt, I got Baba's guidance. Okay. He confirmed that was the place. Was it for sale? Yes, it was for sale. 45 acres of land. And he said we 50, purchased. So it was yeah, perfect. yeah, we purchased. We purchased. <laughs> and how the money came? Somebody came and gave me, this is for the land. For the land. Yes. They we, knew. I tell you. They and, were guided. Yes. No, here I want to tell you something very interesting. So, well, well, you're going to tell me that we're all yeah, guided yeah, to help yeah. one another. At the yeah. same time, they're guided yeah. to be of service to us. Exactly. <laughs> September 6th, first time I went to Gulbarga. Uh, I had requested for a meeting of the devotees, Baba's devotees, and our alumni in that place. And Baba had told me to make three announcements. The first was, the Bhumi Puja, a groundbreaking ceremony, would take place before that birthday in 2011. Second, next to June 2012, school would start. And uh, thirdly, the completed building would be inaugurated before the next birthday. All three happened. <laughs> All three happened. I tell you the very important this, thing this is... This just boggles my mind that Swami <laughs> tells you with yes, such specificity. Yes. yes. And these things actually come to pass. Yes. And he's just smiling over your shoulder as if <laughs> people see it as a mystery that can't be figured out. Yeah, he's In fact, it is a mystery. It's a puzzle. Yeah. It's a puzzle. Yes. How can this person who had the money for the land yeah. have any way of knowing how specific Baba's instructions were to you to yeah. find this land, yeah. someplace you had never been before, yeah. and then you go and you find it and this person comes forth with the money to buy the land. Yeah. And that's probably how all these projects are Yes, happen. and he also gave the plan for that building, which is pentagonal in shape. It's a pentagon. What's the significance of the pentagon shape? Baba because, said... Because I've seen yeah, that more yeah, than once he, here. Yeah, he told me that each side represents one value, Satya, Dharma, Shanti, Prema and Ahimsa, five sides. So his, his handprint is in everything that's done. Yeah, exactly. So that was a new school project, which was inaugurated on November 19th by Sri Indulal Shahji, mm -hmm. who came from Mumbai and inaugurated that, uh, you know, campus. Amazing. So, it's a very busy time for me. What <laughs> I thought, when I came to Muddin Halde, I thought I had served Swami enough and uh, had uh, been a warden in Swami's hostels for continuously for so long. You know, it's a real uh, job. I thought I would come here and in spend West. my time yeah. in contemplation, meditation, or writing. Like and, a monk. And, and, and uh, like a monk and guiding people who come to me for spiritual guidance. And that's what I thought. But now, you know, uh, he has really put me on a, <laughs> uh, I mean, very busy schedule. You better hope that Sai Baba gives you another 40 to 50 years to do all these projects. Yeah, I think he has told me that also. <laughs> <laughs> I think unless he finishes his projects, he won't leave me also. <laughs> so is this, do you think he's having you do all this work with 30 districts and 30 schools, plus the one you mentioned out of the district, uh, as a model, as a template for other people to practice with other states in Definitely. India, and maybe beyond India? Definitely. It's always so. See, Bhagwan, he founded a few hospitals. It doesn't mean those few hospitals can serve the whole world. Yeah. He's setting an ideal, which is, uh, you know, blended with uh, compassion and love for everyone. I just interviewed Dr. Yeah. Devi Prasad Shetty yesterday, yeah. Yeah. the world's largest hospital, yeah. where uh, the cardiothoracic surgeries are being brought down. Currently, they're not here, but they're on their way down to $800 for yeah. those who can afford to pay it and free for those who can't, following right after Baba's exactly. mentioned. 
Exactly, uh, exactly. So, so you're doing the template that others will be able to look to to see how successful they can be. Yeah. Started um, inauspiciously, inexpensively, but very profoundly serving the, the young people in need and how this can be done to help teach the human values in other districts yeah. in any country, not just any yes. state. Yes, it, it is definitely not only for Karnataka, not only for India, it is for everybody who is a follower of Baba and who would, who would like to serve his cause or his mission. I would like to know everything I could. But here, right? you know, I would like to tell you something. Yes, please do. See, today the real crisis in the world, not only in India, is the crisis of bankruptcy of spiritual and moral values. Not financial bankruptcy. Yes. And Baba always believed it is young children, you know, who can be, who, who, who are so pure in their hearts, who could be molded as a new kind of citizens of the world. Mm. He had lost hope of elder people like us, <laughs> because, you know, we don't change. And pure-hearted young people, and it was Baba, you know, who inspired my mentor to say, there are no bad children, there are only bad parents and bad teachers. Yes. Oh, that's a very big Yes, that is, that is the fact. The children are very pure. If you can get hold of a few teachers who are having some kind of purity, it is easy to mold them. See, that is why this educational mission of Baba is most important and that is the only way of salvation for mankind. There is no other way. There is we no other way. No other way. We have to create a new set of young citizens out of these children who come to our schools. Mm -hmm. For example, this particular school, you know, we can take about 200 boys every year, newly. Mm -hmm. We get more than 3,000 applications. Oh my goodness. What it means, 2,800 parents who bring their children, mold my son on the lines of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba's educational philosophy, we are asking them get lost. See, that's a tragedy, according to me. It's a great tragedy. Maybe Baba is, uh, you know, now founding these schools to give opportunity to everybody, every child who wants to study in his institutions. See, that's what it is. Mm. I understand if people want to know more about how Swami's been an influence globally and one-to-one, -one, all they need to do is look up the three volumes on Swami's life, which you have written. Yeah. And did he help you in the form or did he help you through his guidance otherwise? Yeah. Actually, uh, when I, I, I never ever thought, you know, I would have to write his biography because Kasturiji mm -hmm. wrote first four volumes yeah. and next quarter century, nobody attempted writing his biography. The last, uh, you know, biography was published in 1980, mm -hmm. fourth volume. Fifth volume came out in 2005 and in 2003, you know, I was prompted and Baba blessed me to write his uh, biography. And uh, he guided me also to gather material. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever I gathered material, sometimes I had the opportunity to verify its authenticity. And I talked to those people whom I knew well. I didn't talk to everybody because a lot of people tell a lot of stories. You know, uh, I wanted authenticity should be there. Therefore, I verified it from Bhagwan. And photographs, I collected hundreds of photographs out of which he selected photographs for the book. The cover page was uh, selected by him. The cover photo was selected for all the three volumes. Uh, and that's how it happened, yes. Mm. Do you believe Baba guides many of us the same way as he's guiding you or just a few of us? He must be guiding a lot of people all around because you know that a lot of new hospitals are also coming up. I heard about that. Yes, at least and uh, new, new water charging. project also. New water project? Yes, in Andhra Pradesh, Adilabad district. So even after his Mahasamadhi, these yes. projects continue? Yes, yes. Now here I want to tell you something which Swami has told me. It is true that I declared to the world that I would be in this Satya Sai Baba forum for 96 years. I left when I was 85, but I will be in this subtle body till I am 96. So and there's continue, a time frame on And subtle. continue to do what I did. Mm. And the only proof is things are happening. Oh, they are. Things are happening. So this is what one of my friends in Prashantinilyam, who is in a good position in Prashantinilyam, tells me. So it's very difficult to believe what you say. But one thing I believe, whatever Baba is telling you is happening, therefore I have to believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I, because, I, I, because you go to Gulbarga, 
I, I would love you to go to Gulbarga, where we have started. 700 kilometers away, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 700 kilometers away, but there is an airport called Hyderabad, which is 200 kilometers away. Well, we're going and to Hyderabad. you can go there and look at that majestic building. I tell you very honestly, I confess I didn't build it. Then who built it? Is this the building on the 45 acres of land or is this? Yeah, my, it is on the 45 so acres the, of so land. The, so the land was donated, 45 acres, you yeah. found the right place. Yeah. And is, is the school open yet? Yeah, school opened in June. Oh, Last this June. is one, of the, yeah, this yes, is one yes. of the three or four or five that's open already. Yes, so already 123 students are there and uh, 110 boys in the hostel and uh, 13 coming from uh, local villages free education. We don't charge a single paisa for education, which is a matter of great amazement and surprise for people. How do you run this school? He's Pe running it. Tell me and and it the building that. is worth, the building investment on that campus, including land, is more than 10 crore rupees. I, I have and seen pictures of it just yeah, this pictures, yeah, in that beautiful book. pictures. Yes. It, it's, it, nobody thinks that a school that serves children for free would look that magnificent and yeah, exactly. that. Even people ask me that question. Why do you want to go to that God forsaken village and build such a majestic mm -hmm. building? Mm -hmm. I said, it is not me. I am not building. He wants his schools to look like palaces. Give us a couple of more examples of how he's been guiding you. Uh, see, you recently, I will tell you, you asked me about, uh, you know, last fortnight, last week, what he said. Yeah. When I was in Gulbarga last time, I returned here on 21st December. And uh, 17th December, Swami told me, you have to go to a place called Sindagi in Bijapur district. Had you ever heard of that place before? I had, I had heard because a lot of students from there study in Mudhanahad. Okay. You have to go there, just call a meeting of devotees and announce that, you are, uh, that uh, Baba has decided to start a school here. If you find the land and give it to us. <laughs> if the community finds <laughs> yeah, the land. Yeah, community finds the land. So I just went there and announced and came back. <laughs> and they're looking for the land seriously. So, so, that is the other side. Right <laughs> yes. so far they haven't found it. No, no, they will. They will find. Because once Baba wills, it is going to happen. Amazing. It so happened in the case of Mandya also, where Baba had, had uh, declared that he would come as Prem Sai. There also we found the land in a very miraculous way. And Bhumi Puja, our groundbreaking ceremony was done. Has he told you when Prem Sai is going to be born? Uh, uh, See, I think, uh, I think, I think, time will come when you know all this can be spoken about in public. And how can this Not all now. be authenticated? Will, you, will he tell you or somebody, somebody like he's been guiding to authenticate that it is the true Prima Sai? Yeah. No, he has said that Prima Sai would come. And uh, he has told me a few more things which are not for, uh, you know, public at this point of time. <laughs> maybe yeah. if I wait five minutes, uh, uh, you Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> uh, whenever he wants me to declare it, I will declare it to the world. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, yes. Remember, I'm a journalist, so I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Yes. Well, these are amazing. I asked for two examples and you gave me two wonderful examples yeah. right off the top of your head. So, needless to say, you must not fear anything. I don't fear anything because he is always with me. I know that he is with me. That feeling was there even earlier. And now it is more, you know, strong. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's such a, you know, uh, matter of fact. Because he asked me to announce three things. And announced three things, which I did not believe myself. And all that happened. So now I have to believe. <laughs> uh, you and I shared something in common. As we said, we were both doubting Thomases at one time. Yeah. And I know that Baba is calling people to his side now, people who have never heard his name before, been to Prashanti before, seen his form before while he was alive, but they're, calling, they're being called now. Some of these people are a little bit confused yet. They're not quite sure what they're supposed to believe. They may also be doubting Thomases. What can you say to those people? See, the thing is this, God always existed. See, when, when you say that you pray to Jesus Christ, you believe that he exists today, otherwise why will you pray to him? Yeah. Though he left his body 2000 years ago, you believe that he exists, the fact is he exists and he guides you. Mm -hmm. When I pray to Sri Rama, who lived some thousands of years ago, I believe that he exists today. Because we believe Satya Sai Baba is God, just because he has shed his mortal coil, it doesn't mean he has vanished. He is always there, he was always there and whoever believes that he is there, I am sure that they will get his guidance.
they have to believe seek seek you shall get it knock the door shall be open to you it was true 2000 years ago true today and true for all times so therefore the guidance is it is basically faith and a sincere prayer from the heart lord you exist i know you exist but why is it that you are not manifesting for me why why is it that you are not guiding me you cry like a child i am sure that you are going to get guidance that is the eternal law that's what jesus meant when he said seek you shall get it so whoever I... sought was never disappointed this is the experience of all people all believers if it is jesus christ sri rama krishna buddha doesn't matter whoever it is it is the same god and he is going to respond for all those people who get this kind of doubts say i am called to baba baba is physically not there what will happen you pray to him sincerely and you are bound to get guidance sustenance everything and most importantly what is the purpose of our life the purpose of our life is i have to realize i am god god is not separate from me everybody has to realize that that is where baba is leading everybody to that is the destination is he said it when he was in the physical body even today he is doing it in the very last part of this program it's not a question for me i i you've answered all my questions it's a closing comment from you what is it that you would like people to keep in the forefront of their consciousness as they make their journey along their side path yeah i would uh, here like to quote brother lawrence brother lawrence yes practicing the presence of god what prevents us from knowing that god is with me this moment it is my own ego my own desires my own attachments right exactly so once you know my own anger yeah, my own fear all that all that is ego see all that emerges from the ego mm -hmm. once you set it set it aside keep it aside definitely god is with you feel the presence therefore you want to be happy all the time you should feel his presence all the time there is no other way you can be happy all the time see with us human beings what happens we are happy when we are successful and we are miserable when we fail all right but there is one reason why we should be happy always and why we should be optimistic always is god is always with me that is one and the only reason for which i have to be happy if i know that god is with me always i will be always happy and i will be always optimistic it is just that and nothing else so it is not only for the devotees of baba anybody who is born in this world if he or she has to be happy they have to believe in god who is with them all the time so you don't have to move a mountain or change the world all you have to do is change change your yourself yes if you change yourself the world will change for you Mr. Murthy, thank you very, thank you. very much. It's thank you. It's been a wonderful, Sairam wonderful time. Sairam. 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 Nice. because i'm no 70 and you know he gives the energy otherwise how could i do